Just this past week, I released a video on my channel about how I recently took possession of a brand new fourplex here in my region of Gatineau, Quebec. And pretty much every time I release a video speaking about real estate in general, I'll get a variety of comments about how the price points in my region here are unbelievably low compared to Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, and basically the entire Western portion of the country. And this is a phenomenon that's been apparent for years now. However, over the past couple of months, especially since the beginning of 2020, the real estate market in North America and in Canada specifically has gained some unreal momentum to the point where now things are seeming to be somewhat unsustainable. Just take a look at these real estate focused headlines. Housing market soars above pre-pandemic levels. Average Canadian house price soared 18% in past year and Ottawa house prices surged 15% on shrinking inventories. I mean, it is pretty insane that in one single year, house prices are surging 10 to 20% depending on the property type and the geographic region. You all know that I'm an active real estate investor who's looking to find undervalued properties I can add value to, do some renovations, and bring up the rent subsequently. But in this current market environment, things are harder than ever. I mean, pretty much every single property that I'm looking at has literally five to 10 offers within a couple of days, and the house price sells for well above asking. It's definitely a seller's market if we have ever seen one. But even though interest rates are very low right now, basically the lowest mortgage rates we've ever seen, well, this is going to have the impact of stimulating borrowing. However, a 20% housing increase in one single year does not really match up here to a 1% to 2% interest rate difference since last year. I mean, come on. So the question that's on everyone's mind, including my own here, is just how sustainable this propped up real estate market truly is. We're starting to see new articles coming out about an impending housing market crash. And I also found a very interesting article highlighting some key housing market indicators that are honestly quite unsettling, especially for the market here in Canada. We'll be uncovering all the facts in today's video and trying to uncover what the fate of the real estate market here in Canada may hold in the near future. So make sure to smash the like button. It only takes two seconds and really helps the channel out. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Griffin and I hope you're all having a great day as always. If you're new here, then welcome. On this channel, we speak about all things investing. So if you're looking to grow your wealth through investing, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so that you're notified whenever I release new content. All right, so at this point, I'm sure you've been watching my content and the general news over the past year or so, so I'm not going to spend the next 15 minutes explaining every single economic event that's led us to this point, but let me just try to summarize all of this as quickly as possible. Basically, upon the medical issue taking the entire world by storm, this had the impact of major economies shutting down all business operations for several months, most importantly, the United States. And with business operations being shut down entirely and investor optimism at all-time lows, this also had the impact of the stock market taking basically the steepest nosedive it has ever seen in market history, both in Canada and the United States. Now, with that said, in order to try and stimulate the economy and prop it back up a bit here, not only have the federal government's been pouring billions of dollars back into the economy in the form of stimulus packages and serve payments, but they've also slashed down interest rates to basically all-time lows. So both in Canada and the United States, these rock-bottom interest rates have done their job in that borrowing funds is now significantly cheaper and it's stimulating the economy. However, this has also had the impact of significantly dropping driving up the price of homes because there's significantly more demand and not enough inventory to account for all of this demand. The economics behind this are actually quite simple in that with lower interest rates, this means that cost of borrowing is significantly lower. And for this reason, your mortgage payments are going to be lower on a larger piece of property, meaning you can basically afford a larger house for your dollar. But with everyone and their dog now running to the MLS and looking to buy either new houses or rental properties, this has dried up inventory pretty much nationwide and shot up prices. What we're seeing now is almost unprecedented territory in that basically every single house listed on the market is going into bidding war territory and selling significantly over the asking price. I mean, just look at this house here in Orleans, Ottawa that sold for over $250,000 above asking or this house in Toronto that sold for $800,000 above asking asking. Things are getting pretty weird here. Let's get weird, boy. But just think about this for a second. Yes, people can sell their houses and other properties, most likely for well above what they paid for it, even if it's only a couple years back. However, if you're looking to now purchase another property, you're going to be entering the worst buyer's market that we've seen in recent years. It's been said that as of September 2020 in Ottawa, for example, the average home price was now $581,457, which is up 27.5% over the same month last 
last year in 2019. A 30% increase in home prices does not necessarily match up to maybe let's say a 2-3% to difference in mortgage rate tops. Just last year in September 2019 for example, I actually got a mortgage rate of 3% and now fast forward one year and on the recent mortgage I just got, it was a 1.9% interest rate. So that 1.1% difference here doesn't necessarily account for a massive 20-30% to jump in house prices in my opinion. You know what though, let's actually just look at a quick example here. So if last year you bought a house for $300,000 at 20% down let's say and a 25 year amortization period with a 5 year fixed rate mortgage of 3.5%, this would mean that your gross monthly mortgage payments would have been $1,201.50. On the flip side, fast forward to this year when home prices in Ottawa have surged by 27.5%, this would mean that the same house would now be around $382,500. With a 20% down payment, 25 year period, and a 5 year fixed rate mortgage of 1.9%, this would place the gross monthly mortgage payment at $1,282.15. In this example, not only are you still going to be paying more on a monthly basis for your mortgage payments, but you've also just gone ahead and purchased an asset that is significantly more expensive, and so for this reason, you have a lot less equity on the buy to play with if you want to sell the property in a couple years or so. Now, yes, I'll admit this is just me being an investor here, always looking for the exit strategy. So if you are going to be purchasing a home and staying in it for multiple decades, let's say, this doesn't necessarily apply, but it's still something to consider. Let's actually take a deeper look into what's going on in the Canadian real estate market from a quantitative standpoint. The data we're about to cover is from 2015 to 2019, so keep this in mind, but this is all data that was collected about a possible real estate bubble across the world in 22 different countries. The first key metric we'll be looking at here is called the house price to rent ratio, which compares how quickly house prices are rising in contrast to what income is generated by renting that same property out. If the index happens to be higher than 100, well, this means that housing prices are rising quicker compared to what renters are actually paying for that same type of property, which over the long term would be unsustainable because people would just end up selling their houses at a profit and becoming renters, thus saving on housing costs. In Canada, this ratio is at 195.9, meaning house prices since 2015 have been rising at nearly double the pace of rent increases. Interestingly, the US only has a ratio of 110.8 for this metric. The second key metric that was identified in this study is the house price to income ratio. Quite simply, this is a comparison of how fast the housing prices are rising in relation to how much income individuals are making to see whether or not people will be able to maintain their mortgage payments over the long term, even though interest rates are lower right now. Canada actually comes in second for this ratio at 155.3, meaning the housing prices are effectively going up 50% quicker than salaries and income. The third ratio is called the real house price, which gives us an idea of whether the housing price increase is growing at a faster pace than inflation and by how much. If house prices are outpacing inflation too rapidly, well this could lead to bubble territory. Once again, Canada is at the top of the list here with a real house price ratio of 124.1. And finally, the last key metric that was identified in this study is the credit to households as a percentage of gross domestic product, acronym GDP. If consumer debt crosses past the 100% GDP mark for an economy, this could be a sign of lending practices moving towards unsustainability. In Canada, as of 2019, we were just past the 100% mark. Alright, so this is real interesting and all, but what should we make out of all this data? Because after all, this was pre-pandemic data and you would think that if things were so fragile, by now we would have seen a severe correction in housing prices. But actually, as we've all experienced here, it's the complete opposite in that month after month we're seeing housing prices increase quite steadily. The most important factor in my opinion during this whole situation is the current low interest rate environment which has had an impact on a purchasing power. We've already spoken about this earlier on in the video but essentially if the federal government keep baseline interest rates quite low as they are right now for years to come which actually they've mentioned that they will be keeping interest rates low for the foreseeable future they should have the impact of propping up the housing market for at least a couple more years 
to come. The thing is, our most recent memories of a terrible real estate market was in 2008 during the subprime mortgage collapse, but what we need to keep in mind is that this was as a result of extremely lenient lending practices and people simply abandoning their homes or getting them repossessed because they were completely over leveraged and underwater, which led to such a terrible outcome. What I'm trying to say here is that the real estate market in Canada specifically is definitely unsustainable. That is a given having bidding wars on pretty much every property and selling well above asking price. That's not something we're going to be seeing for years to come for sure. With that said though, I personally just do not see a 30% decline in real estate over the coming years as we saw in 2008. Now, yes, I will agree though that once mortgage deferral programs are up and CERB payments do come to an end, which by the way though, the federal government has actually just extended CERB payments for a couple more months. Uh, well, at that point, I do think that, yeah, we're probably going to be seeing an increase in property inventory on the market once some individuals either decide to sell their properties or they do actually go into defaulting territory, at which point this will probably have an impact of either stabilizing the market or actually even maybe seeing it go down slightly. But again, a 30% decrease in home prices, I just don't see this happening because for this to actually materialize, there would need to be tens and tens of thousands of houses going up on the market, flooding the overall real estate market and driving down prices significantly. And the reality is that the average equity here in Canadian homes in relation to the home's value is 73% as of 2020. So for massive home defaulting to take place where people are underwater like in 2008 and decide to walk away from their homes, the market would need to dive by more than 30%. This just isn't going to happen on a wide scale level all at once in my opinion. Even the large Canadian banks such as TD, RBC, Scotiabank and others who are the main issuers of mortgage loans in Canada are slashing down their provisions for credit losses in the 50 to 80% range from Q3 since Q2, which means that they are optimistic about the Canadian economy moving forward. And if the banks are seeing things this way with the bulk of their income being derived from interest payments, this definitely says a lot. Okay, so with everything that we just covered, what are my final thoughts on the current state of the housing market? First off, I think it's very important that we put more emphasis on local market trends instead of national wide trends because the reality is as we're seeing right here, different markets across Canada are impacted very differently. Case in point, the real estate industry out in Alberta, for example, has not seen anywhere near the type of movements that the real estate industry here in the capital region has seen over the past five to 10 years. My strategy is going to remain the same and that I'm looking to invest in undervalued properties that I can get in on with strategic renovations, raise the rent, and for this reason, have some very nice cash flows that are going to allow me to weather through a potential market downturn in the case of Canadian properties. What's really important moving forward is that you look for undervalued properties just like I am instead of just going out and purchasing any property that you can get your hands on. This is definitely a time to be picky on your real estate deals if there has ever been one in the Canadian market. And I cannot stress this enough that you need to allocate sufficient room for rent as well as property values being slashed down in the short to medium term if this does end up materializing so that you're not underwater on your properties. On the flip side though, if you're looking to purchase a house to live in instead of a rental property or an investment, you need to think long and hard about what you really need here and make sure to purchase a property that fits within your financial means. It is critical that you don't overextend yourself and go ahead and purchase a property where you're spending more than 50% of your monthly inflows of cash on housing as well as other housing related costs. On that note, if you're a millennial aspiring to be a homeowner in the coming future here, then make sure that you continue saving your money and even consider moving out of larger cities, your dollar will go a lot farther. So what are your thoughts on all the data that we just covered in today's video? Do you think that there is going to be a severe market crash in the near future? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know and start up a conversation. Make sure to also check out my other real estate related content and housing content on the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please take two seconds to smash a like button. That's all I ask in return and it only takes two seconds. I'd also encourage you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button if you're interested in learning more about investing in general, stock investing, company analysis, real estate analysis, and so forth. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel. On that note, thanks a lot for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.